So menopause is when we stop having periods and the average age of menopause is about 51. Perimenopause is the term that we give to the few years that happen before our menopause, so before our periods stop completely. And really what you might notice is a change in the pattern of your period. So they might be less regular or they might be heavier, they might be lighter. And at the same time in the background, uh, your hormones are fluctuating and they can be very erratic. When you're in your um, 20s and 30s, for example, you might have um, hormones that are fluctuating just a little, kind of month on month. For some women, they might find that even these small fluctuations in hormones actually lead to symptoms like uh, premenstrual syndrome or PMS. So things like bloating, headache, breast tenderness, irritability or low mood. When you get to perimenopause, the first thing we see is a dip in estrogen. And unfortunately, this dip then your body uh, picks up on the fact that your estrogen has fallen and tries to overcompensate. And so you get a really big rise in estrogen. So you can actually have some excess estrogen when you're in perimenopause. And this goes up and down and maybe you go back to normal for a couple of months and then it happens again. And really this bouncing up and down effect happens sort of more and more frequently as time progresses until eventually your ovaries aren't able to produce the estrogen at all anymore and you end up in a state of estrogen deficiency. And when we hit menopause, our ovaries stop ovulating. So we're not producing an egg once a month anymore. And we're also not producing estrogen. And that's what creates a lot of our symptoms. We know that about 75% of women, as they go through menopause, as they lose these hormones, will become symptomatic. So the majority of women have an impact on their quality of life, their day-to-day, -day, their relationships, their ability to work, um, and just their enjoyment of their day-to-day -day life. Um, not to mention the health impact of menopause. So 50% of the population go through menopause and will have bone loss, giving them a high risk of osteoporosis, which can lead to hip fractures and chronic pain later in life. And we see an increased risk of cardiovascular disease as a woman goes through menopause as well. And these are things that we can modify with lifestyle and with correct medication. So there are lots of treatment options for women who are experiencing symptoms of perimenopause or menopause. There are lifestyle changes to be made and sometimes we talk about things like reducing caffeine and alcohol. If you're smoking, now is a good time to stop. Um, increasing your vitamin D intake and exercise, both aerobic exercise, which is great for your heart, and weight-bearing exercise, which is really good for your bones. I'll talk to a lot of women about cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. And that's been shown to be really helpful for some of the mood and sleep symptoms that can happen. And then we talk about hormonal options and non-hormonal options. The non-hormonal options for women experiencing these symptoms, well, there's a few and it's worth talking to your GP or your provider about whether or not they're suitable for you. The hormone therapy options are usually a combination of estrogen and progesterone. Um, and it's really important which hormones you're on and how you take them. So it's really important to have a discussion about this and to chat to your GP or your healthcare provider.